If you ever played video games, it is almost certain you already saw a hacker in one of your games. The experience can be pretty frustrating and you may end up wondering how do they do it and why aren't game developers stopping them. Hey I'm Max, I'm a game developer and today I will show you the basics of how game hacks are made, how they work and I plan to make a future video covering the methods of stopping them. Before we start talking about the game hacks themselves, you have to understand the basic of how a game runs on your device. First, the game is programmed by the developers like me in a programming language, usually in an engine, that is then compiled down into assembly, which is a sort of machine language, which is then read by the machine using binary. It is important to note that the developers will usually never see the assembly build of their game, that is all handled by the language and the engine, and that hackers will usually never see the source code of the game, because that is compiled and it's very hard to uncompile it. When you launch a game, the assembly code for that game is loaded into your memory and will stay there until you close it. The game also allocates memory for variables, which are values that the game will use, such as the player's health or ammo. Now that you know that, let's view the basics of hacking so we know better why it is so hard to counter it. For this demonstration, I will be using a mobile game that I coded myself and a free tool called Cheat Engine. Also, most of the time when you download hacks on the internet, you will not get something that runs on Cheat Engine, but it's its own application, so I will also show how it's done in C++ code so you can see the difference. The first type of hacking that can be done is editing variables. For this first example, you can see in the top right of the game, there are two coins multipliers that slowly go up. I start by searching 3 when it shows times 3, then when it goes up to times 4, I search for 4, what this does is Cheat Engine will look for the ones that are 3 and then when I search for 4 again it will search for the ones that are now 4 and that were 3 before so we narrow it down until we find the variable that we need. A program always has tons of addresses with a ton of values so it will always take at least 2 searches to find the right one. I waited until it went up to 5 to be sure, now that I knew that I had the right value I changed them to 16 and I started getting way more coins for the enemies I defeated. When I set it to 99, I get even more, but the way the game is coded, the higher it is, the more coins you get, but also the more life the enemies have and the faster they spawn, so I quickly get overpowered. Next, I scanned my lasers level, increased it, scanned for the new level, I found the address, edited it, and now my laser is a lot stronger. You get the idea, it's always the same thing. But what if you don't know the exact value of the variable you're looking for, and this will be a method of preventing it later in the other video. But for now, let's look at the health. I know that my health goes from probably zero to something higher, and then goes down when I get damaged, because that's what makes sense. So I start off with a scan from 1 to 1000, because I don't know the scale of the health in the variable, I only see the bar. Then, as I get hit, I scan for decreased value, but I don't know how much it decreases by, so just decreased value overall, and that will remove all values who have increased or not changed since the last scan. With this, I narrow it down until I have one that looks pretty good, and I try to lock it to see if it works, and there you go, I'm unkillable. So you can see that not telling your player the exact value of your variables, but instead using something like a bar, can make it harder to find. But using tricks like decrease value, they can still find it. Okay, that's cool and all, but game hacks usually aren't inside of Cheat Engine, but inside their own application. So here is a little C++ project. First, I find the window using the title of the game. Then I get the process ID from that window and then get an handle to that process. I then wait for input. If the user types laser, I read the address of the laser that I found in Cheat Engine. Then I print the value, let the user set a new one. And that is all done using basic C++ code, such as read memory and write memory. So that means you don't even need to have Cheat Engine open or even installed to use this. Cheat Engine is only used to find the address and once you found it, you can use it in your C++ code by itself, it's fine. And since C++ goes straight to the machine memory, that means the program, like the game in this case, cannot know that something is being written or read in the memory. And that is the main reason why protecting your game against cheats is so difficult. Because in your game's code, you have absolutely no way of detecting if the memory was changed by another application. So let me test my C++ application. I type laser, it shows 45. I type 99, it sets it to 99. You can see it update in Cheat Engine. 
and in-game when I press the button. The big problem with using direct addresses like these is that when you restart the game, they change. Obviously, hack developers cannot ask their user to search for addresses and then input them into their program, so they will have to find addresses in their own app. This is pretty easy to do because while the addresses change, there are always static paths to the addresses. For example, in my game, I always have a main game script where the weapons info are stored, and the laser, for example, is always the fourth in the weapons list, so if you find the start of the game in memory, then you go forward a set amount to the game script, then go a set amount to the weapons list, find the fourth one, go there and can find the laser level. So basically you always have to start from the beginning of the game and move on a set path to go to where you want. And that path is always going to stay the same unless the game updates or something like that. Once again, Cheat Engine is a huge time saver because it can actually look for those paths and then once you find it, you can put it into your program and it's going to work by itself. The way it is done is that it scans for pointers that point to the address you want, so in my case the laser level, and I have to repeat it a few times after relaunching the game to find one that doesn't change when relaunching the game. First, I find the laser level value, I scan for it, and I get 20,000 paths. I relaunch the game, I find the address again, and I scan for it in my 20,000 list for the ones that now point to the new one, and I get 1200 results. I do this a few more times and pick a few in the list. Now you can see it works even after restarting the game. Let's do it in C++ now. In Cheat Engine, I inspect the pointer I just found. It tells me the address of the laser level is found under the mono DLL, which is a module in the process, don't worry about that. And then at plus 003A827C. Once you go to that address, you have to read where it points and go there. Once at the pointed location, I add 728. I read, I go there, and finally add 70 to get the address of the variable. Once you read it, you get the value of the laser. If I did the scans correctly in Cheat Engine, this path should never change, which means that always when I launch my game, if I go to mono DLL and then I add that one, go to the next one, add that one, and add another time, I will always end up at the address of the level laser. So even if the absolute location of the address changes, the relative position relative to the mono DLL or at least the path that it takes will never change. You can see my program is able to find the address, read the value and change it. If I restart the game, the addresses change but the path stays the same so it can be found doing the same steps. Now you may be wondering, since all the values I've found so far was by scanning a changing value in game, can you find values that don't change, like the damage of a weapon? It is a lot harder, but yes you can. Most of the time you cannot search for it because you don't know the exact value, but also because searching a value that doesn't change is almost impossible. You will get thousands and thousands of possible results and you cannot possibly check them all. Instead, you can find a changing value close to the one you want and search there. Let's say I want to change my laser's damage. I know since I'm the developer of this game that the damage is in the weapon class next to the level variable. But even if I didn't make the game, since the two values are linked to the same weapon, it is very likely to be close in memory. I can explore the memory region around the laser level value. If I change the display type to float, which means decimal values, I can see right above a 15, 100 and 0 0.1. I know what they are since I made the game, but you can try changing them and see what it does. So finding variables that don't change is actually a lot harder because it's mostly done by trial and errors. You go around a value that you think it might be near that and then try to change some things and see what it does. For example, if I change the first one to 1000, you can see I now one shot every enemy, so I know this is the damage. I can apply the same method to find the rifle damage, fire rate and reload time. Changing variables is pretty easy, but it is very limited. Most hackers you see in game don't use only this. For example, if you want to prevent something from happening or make something new happen that the game isn't programmed to do, such as to make a player fly in a game that it's not supposed to fly, how do you do this? For things like this, you have to edit the code of the game itself. I will show a simple example, but this can be done at a large scale to modify a large part of the games. And this is a big part of how advanced hacks are made. For this example here, I found the health variable, 
I can tell Cheat Engine to keep setting it back to 40 so I don't die, but if I get an instant damage of let's say 100, I will die anyway. If I ask it to tell me what writes to the health value, I can find the operations that make my health go down when I'm hit. I can then tell Cheat Engine to replace those lines of code with code that does nothing, effectively removing the code that removes my health, making me invincible. I cannot take any damage from any source, the code to damage me literally does not exist in the game anymore. At least in the RAM, that means if I relaunch the game it will be back of course. However, this method has a much greater risk because if you do something wrong when changing the code, it will bug or even crash the game. Also, if the same code is shared for multiple purposes, it might not do what you want. For example, in my health case, it also prevented enemies from getting damaged and apparently it prevented them from spawning too. So you have to be very careful what you change. So for example, in this case, if I wanted to make myself invincible but not the enemies, I would have to do something like if the target is the player, then don't damage and if it's not, then do the damage or something like this. So that's a little bit too much for me to do in assembly. Assembly is not made to be used by people, it's made for the computer, so it's very hard to understand for humans. Now, if I find a pistol ammo, I can check what removes one from it when I fire. When I do this, I find this decrement EAX instruction, and that means remove one from EAX. If I replace it with code that does nothing, my ammo no longer goes down. If I change it to increment EAX, it goes up when I fire. Also note that even though I only checked the pistol ammo, since all the weapons used the same code, it prevented them all from losing ammo. Keep in mind this is a very small example, but you can edit everything and also add more things. So this is very powerful. Now, what if you want to do this in your C++ application? Well, it is pretty difficult. Because there are no pointers to this one. There is no spot in memory that will tell you where the instruction for removing one from the ammo is. That is just not a thing. And there are no paths to it that never change either. Instead, you have to scan the whole game for a specific and unique array of bytes for that instruction. Cheat Engine can try to do it for you, but it doesn't always work, because sometimes some parts of the code will change. Here it gave me 48, 89, 47, 28, and you can see the rest. And this actually represents the bytes of the instruction in assembly. So each instruction is linked to a certain byte. So for example, decrement is 48. So if I set it to 48, it will decrement. If I set it to 90, then it will do nothing because 90 is nothing. That means in my program, I have to scan the whole game to find those bytes in that order. Then I will know the first 48 means decrement my ammo. And if I change it to 90, then I will make it do nothing. So I will have infinite ammo pretty much. And yeah, it took me a while to get it working. My code still doesn't work that well. It's actually pretty hard to do, but I don't really care because I'm not really trying. I'm just showing. It takes a while to scan. A cheat Engine does it a lot faster, so clearly there are ways to do it faster. But anyway, my program ends up finding the bytes. I actually had to change the bytes I was looking for because some of the one cheat engines gave me didn't work because they changed on restart. So when I find the bytes I need now, instead of ending up on the 48, I end up with the address of the instruction a bit above 48. You can see if I replace it with nothing, it doesn't do it at the right location and it messes up my old game. I can see the address I'm getting from the scan is 6 bytes behind the 48 that I want to change, so I just have to do plus 6 and it works. I get the address of the 48, I replace it with a 90 and now everything works and the ammo doesn't go down. The final result of this whole experiment is I have a program that can let me disable ammo going down and set my laser level. This is very far in terms of result to the big hacking software you see everywhere in popular games like GTA or Call of Duty, but in terms of functionalities it is actually pretty close. Many of them will inject DLLs that can add their own code more easily than just typing the assembly like I did. But the result all comes down similar to this, I can even say that this is slightly better because injecting a DLL could potentially be detected more easily than adding assembly code like this. Hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit more about how hacks in video games work 
In my next video, I will cover techniques that can be used to prevent or try to prevent hacking. Spoilers, you actually cannot do that much. And the more we do to stop hacking, the more the legit users will suffer because of lag and increased development time. So we need to balance the effort and the result. It's sad, but really, we cannot do that much to stop it. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more or check out my devlogs if you're interested in game development.